Well, in case you hadn't figured it, it's daily light. <laughs> and, oh, just a few degrees more and the sun will be back in the shade. Praise the Lord, I was talking to my wife the other day and uh, we pulled up a picture that Greg had posted on the internet. and It showed him with the long flowing hair and big giant red beard. And I remember laughing because the uh, first time I grew a beard it was big and red. Yeah. <laughs> now not so much so. But uh, I was commenting, I said, you know honey, I said, I'm really jealous of Greg. You know, and she said, really? Why? Because he's such a uh, dynamic evangelist, you know, and because he's got such a huge following at the church, you know, and that because, you know, he he shares the word of God and, and is on the radio and all that stuff. And I said, no. <laughs> she said, really? Why? I said, well, He's bald. <laughs> I said, I'm jealous. <laughs> I said, me? Man, I could grow hair on my nose. I could grow hair on my toes. I could grow hair in my ears. I said, I grow hair everywhere. And she goes, I know. <laughs> I said, well, I'm jealous. I said, man, I wish I could figure out what he's got going. I'd go for some of that bald routine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Though the grass may not always be greener on the other side of the hill, Certainly, I can say that the hair is always flowing on the other side of the bulb. <laughs> oh, boy. Don't let Greg see this video. If he happens to look and find somebody as meek and lowly as I am. <laughs> hey, Greg! <laughs> Check it out, man. I got hair. <laughs> right here. Where do I... Or what do women do? They go... <laughs> I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Thy law is within my heart. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if by, for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened unto a man who beholding his natural face in a glass. When Jesus spoke, he didn't give out the idea that the law was bad, or that there was something wrong with loving your neighbor as yourself, or or to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, or to any of the Ten Commandments, did he treat it as being something not to be desired, as though it weren't a guide for us, and instructions, something that would steer us in the right direction. But he enlightened us to a better way of knowing God in a personal, intimate way that we wouldn't even need to be instructed like little children, but that we would become men and women of God, that we would delight to do His will and accomplish the purposes of what He gave the law to do. Because you see, when, when the law was given, you know, people walked with God before Moses. I mean, sometimes I listen to people talk about the law as though, you know, what happened before Sinai? What were the children of Israel doing before they went to Egypt, before the law was given? Do you realize that? Do you think about it whenever you're arguing these law and grace issues that Abraham walked with God, talked to God, knew God? Do you realize that, hey, Noah, I mean, there's a lot of people 
prior to Moses and the law that uh, seems to me they knew God pretty well. Seems like God spoke to them, you know. Now, when the children of Israel had been forced to go into Egypt, they were like any slave people, any black slavery people, any Chinese slavery people. Yes, the Chinese had slaves too. Any slaves anywhere, whenever they're taken into slavery, are absorbed into the culture and forced into a different mode and mindset. They have the mind of a slave because they're trained only to serve the needs of their master. Their heritage, their perspective, their previous existence is usually removed from them in dramatic ways because their masters force them into a style of living that they do not remember or recall. And so when the children of Israel were in Egypt, though as much as I'd like to say they kept to all the traditions of their fathers, no, they didn't, obviously, because God did not accept them at Sinai. He told them, if you want to be my people, this is what you must do. And so he gave them a different way of living. He gave them a lifestyle choice that they had become more Egyptian than they were the people of God. When they first went down to Egypt, as they were walking with Jacob, they still had not been perfected because God was giving instructions in the way that they should go. He was teaching them about living with God as opposed to being just nomadic or being people that just wandered without any rudder, so to speak, without any direction, without any purpose, but doing what seemed right according to what little bit they knew. So. As God revealed himself throughout the ages, he's always instructed us as we come closer to being able to understand him in a more excellent way. And finally, Jesus gave us that more excellent way, which was based upon love and mercy, the grace, which doesn't mean that we toss out the law and say, oh, well, we do our own thing as long as it's loving. No, not really. We do our thing according to the love that God has given us, shed abroad in our hearts. You know, I'm watching something come filtering across like, wow, all these little things are flying in the air right now. <laughs> Looks like little buddies. Oh no, it's gold dust. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to offend so many people that get into that. It's just dust. <laughs> it's just this time of year when some of the seeds may be in the air or something blown off the leaves. The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. There was a strife among them, which, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But you shall not be so. But he that is chief, as he, but you shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that does serve. For whether is greater he that sits at the meat, or he that serves, is not he that sits at meat. But I am among you as he that serves. Even the Son of Man be ministered unto, but to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus rises up from the supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. If we treated our relationship like Jesus treated his own office, you could say, as the head of the Christ, as the head of the body of Christ, then. Would we not prefer others greater than ourselves? Would we not ask and seek to have the Lord teach us to serve like he served, to do as he did? Would we not prefer not to be in front of people, but to bring others into an awareness of their abilities and put them in front of people? Likewise, allowing them to exercise as a some of the gifts that they have or abilities. 
training them up to be disciples of Jesus, to walk after him, to talk like him, to show the things that God has done in their lives. I try to tell people daily, hey, look, it doesn't take a, you know, a whole lot of money to go out and get a web camera. <laughs> it doesn't take a whole lot of brain to, you know, to pick up a book and read it. It takes a little bit of faith to you know, open your mouth and let God speak. But the reality is, is if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, you know, you, God will lead you into what it is that he will have you to do. But most of all, you're not doing it so that you could be known. You're doing it so that you could show someone the way they should go, so that they could be known by those things which they are doing unto the Lord, with the Lord, and in the Lord. Because as Jesus reveals himself in them, they are affecting so many people around them. So it's really not about your pastor, you know, and God bless him, you know, if it's Greg or whoever it may be, I don't care who it is. <laughs> Frankly, the, the I, I like to say it this way, and you'll probably take offense, sorry. The poor slob that God puts up front, you know, already got his reward, so he ain't getting nothing in heaven, so <laughs> sadly, he's got it all now. <laughs> Enjoy your Harleys. <laughs> but the point being is that the least of those, like you and I, who are in the kingdom of God, and you more so than I, since I'm in front of the camera, we are the greatest in the kingdom of God, because we have the least of that which God said to do. We're not supposed to be well known and out there in front of everyone. We're supposed to be sharing and caring about each other so much so that it would just be a mass of love coming from the people of God rather than individuals standing in front of a congregation of thousands. Sorry, they had the reward, you know, according to what the Lord said. So the next time that you think you want mega church or mega ministry, how about just being you know, make a God and lift up everyone around you. You may find out that when you get to heaven, you were the greatest in the kingdom of God and not the least of these, his brethren.